glory for today, for what you're about to do. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. Today, speak to us. Energize us. Let our eyes be open. Our ears be open to you. And our hearts be inclined to your word. We appreciate you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Speak through me to deliver your word, to bring your word in simplicity, in power, and in revelation. We give you praise, and all the saints of God shall say, Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Today, my son Ariel told me that he wants to just recite, give you a scripture. So, let's welcome Ariel to come and give us a scripture from John 3.16. John 3.16. Where is your Bible? Where is your Bible? Oh, you, you can put... Oh, all right. One minute. Hallelujah. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for area. Hallelujah. Read verse 17. 17 to oh. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for area. Amen. You want to say a word? You done? Okay. So is that all your preaching? told me he wants to preach and woe unto me if I say no. Amen. We thank God for his life, at least for him to be doing, which means the sign is there. Sign of great things to come. Amen. I want us to open our scriptures to the book of Psalm 91 and I will read from verse 1 through 15. Psalm 91 verse 1 through 15. 15. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under on his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil before thee. Neither shall any plague Come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and other, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample on their feet, because he has set his love upon thee upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high 
because he has known my name. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise be to the name of the Lord. May the Lord add his blessings to his holy reading. I want to talk shortly on this subject. The secret place of God. The secret place of God. Amen. And the Bible says, verse number one of Psalm 91, it said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Number one, dwelling in the secret place of God means reside and abide. Or abide or, or taking residence in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Dwelling means residence or abode is a self contained unit or accommodation used by one or more. Hallelujah. How do you get into the dwelling place of God? Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse number 1 and 2 talks about that. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2 said, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. So dwelling in the secret place of the Lord means that we must hearken to the things and the voice of God. Hallelujah. When we hearken to his things, when we become obedient to his word, when we reside and abide in his word, then we are dwelling in the secret place of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. In the above statement, it clearly shows that not everyone can be in the dwelling place of God. Not everyone can be in the dwelling place of God. Number one, to be by the dwelling place of God Number one is by choice. All right? It's by choice. You can decide to be, to dwell in the Lord. It's by choice. Number two, by obedience. Number one, by choice. Number two, by obedience. And number three, by doing what the Lord had commanded you to do. Amen. By choice by obedience and by doing what the Lord has commanded you to do. That is dwelling in the secret place of God. And today, I want you to choose by choice, which means that we have the will. We have our own will to, to choose or to decide whether I want to be in the dwelling place of the Lord or not. But I beseech you as an apostle in this place, as a pastor in this place, as a prophet in our time, that choose to dwell in the presence of the Lord. Because when you are in the secret place of the Lord, when the enemy comes, he doesn't see you. The enemy sees God. And since the enemy is afraid of God, the enemy cannot touch you. Hallelujah. When you dwell in the secret place of God, you become untouchable. Hallelujah. You become untouchable. Whatever the enemy will throw at you shall never work. Shall never stand. Hallelujah. Amen. By obedience, I submit to you that as children of God, we must obey the word of God. What the word of God tells us is what we must do. Hallelujah. God chooses his men and uses his men to speak into our lives. 
Hallelujah. The book of Amos says that three is that the Lord thy God will do nothing except he has revealed it to his uh, prophets. His sons, the prophets. His servants, the prophets. So God will never do things in your life until he has revealed your word through his prophet. As I stand here, the word prophecy means declaring the word of the Lord. Amen. Prophecy means what? Declaring the word of the Lord. That says a lot. The, the word of the Lord is the word that I'm reading to you. So prophecy comes through declaring the word of the Lord. It comes through proclaiming the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord says that if you obey the commandment, you obey, become obedient to his word, you are in him. Hallelujah. By doing what the Lord has commanded you to do, we must be doers of the word, not hearers of the word. If the Lord commands us to do something, we must act on that word. Hallelujah. Amen. Because acting on the word of God produces result. If you don't act on the word, you don't re receive anything. Assuming when the children of Israel came to the Red Sea and their, their, their enemies were behind them, the Egyptians were behind them, and in front of them was the Red Sea, and beside them were the mountains. And the Lord said, Moses, stretch forth your rod to the water. And Moses refused to do what the Lord has commanded him to do. What would have happened? They would have been taken back into what? Captivity. But Moses became obedient to the word. He did not even know what was going to happen. Let me tell you, it's so amazing if you become the doer of the word you will never even know what God is going to do for you. It becomes a miracle. It becomes a breakthrough. Hallelujah. He struck from the rod upon the water over the water and instantly the water divided. When God releases his word into your life, there's a breakthrough. Anything that has blocked you, anything that has, that has become a hindrance, as the word of God is released, there's a path made for you. Hallelujah. He that dwells in the secret place of the Lord, by dwelling, you do it by choice, by obedience and by doing what the Lord has commanded you to do. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm, Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2. He said, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Hallelujah. One of the things that I've realized that or I've come to is that as you begin to meditate upon the word of God day and night, it brings revelation, it brings power. Hallelujah. When you think about the word of God, when you think about his word, you begin to meditate it. You see, in the book of Joshua, the Bible says when Moses died and God called Joshua, I said, my, my servant Moses is dead, and therefore I rise and take my children over uh, uh, over this Jordan before God did something he, one of the things that God told Joshua he said this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth for you shall meditate day and night and the word of the Lord the grace of the Lord the word of the Lord shall make your way prosperous and you shall have what good sources dwelling in the secret place of the Lord means meditating on his word. What is his, what 
is the word saying to you? When you woke up this morning, what did the word say? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes I sit and I look at circumstances and things that go around. And the word of God comes and I begin to ponder over it. He said, for weeping may endure for a night, but what? Joy comes in the morning. And that's what the word of God tells me. So I begin to think about it. Weeping may endure for a night. Which means that whatever you are going through that is not right is for a season. It's not eternal. It, it, it has a short span. For weeping may endure for a night, but there is a morning that is coming upon your life. That morning brings what? Joy. And I'm here to tell you that whatever you've been through, joy is coming to you. There is a morning that is coming. There is a day that God has set for you. Dwelling in the presence of the Lord means that God has set a day for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word of God sometimes tells me, so they, they will come against me in one way, but the spirit of the Lord shall scatter them in several ways. Hallelujah. And guess what? Look at what David said. He said, he said I will say, once I dwell in the presence of the Lord, then I will say, the Lord is... Is what? Is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. You trust in the Lord. You don't trust in any man. You don't trust around whatever you see. Whatever the enemy throw at you, just bounce it back. Just put your trust, your reliance, everything in the Lord. Believe in his word. Hallelujah. Believe in his word. The song that we sang said, take me back. How many of us, the day we came, the day we surrendered our lives, I said, I surrender all. And, and accepted Jesus Christ as our personal and Lord Savior. There was some kind of joy. Anything, everything around us did not matter. But there's something that connected to our spirit. Then we received that word. And we went about preaching and talking about the goodness of God. To the place I first received you. Hallelujah. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is, is a place or a state of safety. The Lord is my safety. It says, surely as you dwell in the presence of the Lord, as you dwell in the secret place of the Lord, it says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Any snare of the fowler working against you in the name of Jesus Christ, that snare is broken. Every trap of the enemy set against your life is broken today. At the sound of my voice, may the Lord deliver you. May you deliver you from every pestilence of the enemy. May he deliver you from every mishaps. In the name of Jesus Christ. This virus that is going around. We may not know whoever is infected or not. But may the power of God. As we dwell in the secret place of the most high. May we be shielded. May we be protected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's something. Amen. Check the board and see. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord.
Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give God a praise. The devil is a liar. Amen. Trust in the Lord. He shall cover you or cover thee with his feathers. Hallelujah. It is about dwelling in the secret place of the Lord. It's about his word. And those who are actively involved and doing his word are the only people who qualifies to be in his dwelling place. Those who are what? Actively involved in his word. And number two, according to the scripture that we read, it said, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Number two, the shadow of the Almighty is the covering of God. The shadow of the Almighty is the covering of God. His full protection. Verse 2 to 4 of Psalm 91 explains that. Said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Hallelujah. The shadow under the shadow of the Almighty means that wherever you go, you are under the full protection of God. When you drive, the angels are protecting you. When you walk on the street, you are being protected. When you come in contact with people that are infected, infested with so many things, you are still protected. You see, thank God that the Lord does not open our eyes to the spiritual things. Many of us, otherwise, we will kill ourselves before our time. Why? Because the things that we see around and the people we come in contact with, not all of them are human beings. So if your eyes will be open and you are greeting somebody who is not a human being, but a person naturally, the person stands in front of you and the person feels like a human being, but spiritually is an animal or something else. We will go insane. So you are shaking somebody. Somebody is saying hi. You are sitting in a car or in a subway, in a train, and uh, about half of the people in the train are not human beings. Guess what? What will happen to you? So the Lord blinds our eyes concerning some spiritual things and open our eyes to the physical things. So you may be seeing a demon but naturally, that demon is a human being, so you don't care. Your heart does not fret. Your heart does not murmur. You are secured. And even they want to, you see someone or a demon who is trying to shoot an arrow at you. But because you are under the shadow of Jehovah God, they try to come close, but they can't. Because there is a fire, there is a wall, there is a protection all around you. Hallelujah. They try everything and they can't come close. They try to poison you, but they can't come close. They try to cause an obstruction in your life, but they can't come close. Why? Because you are under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwells in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow. Hallelujah. The full protection of God is upon you. Hallelujah. May I submit to you this morning that you are protected. I declare upon your life, your children are protected. Your grandchildren are protected. Your siblings are protected. Your, your parents are protected. Whoever is connected to you, they are protected. Why? Because the full covering of God is upon you. That so he shall cover thee with his feathers. And on all his wings that shall trust 
I said number three, he said, the Lord is my refuge. Refuge is a place or a state of safety. The Lord is my refuge. The one that dwells in the secret place of the Lord, that secret place becomes a refuge of that person. Hallelujah. It may also refer to more uh, or specific meaning like fortress. A fortress means fortifications are military constructions or buildings designed for the defense of territories in warfare. So if the Lord becomes your defense, if the Lord becomes your refuge, which means that you don't fight. He is the one who employs all his asana on your behalf on warfare. Hallelujah. May the Lord strike your enemies. In the name of Jesus, may he strike your enemies. May he strike the cheekbone of your enemies. Those who want your downfall, may the Lord put them back in the same pit that they dug for you. May he elevate you. May he become your fortress. May he become the one that will fight your battles. No wonder the word of God says, hold your peace and I, the Lord, will fight your battles. May the Lord fight your battles. May the Lord elevate you. May the Lord sideline every lion that has been sent from the pit of hell to roar at you. Because he is your refuge. The Lord is is my refuge. Hallelujah. May the Lord build a territory around you. May he secure you in all that you do. May he bring you to a place of safety. You will not dash your foot against any stone. This year, may the Lord cause you to smile. This year, may the Lord bring laughter into your, into, into, into your life. Number three, enjoying the fullness of his blessing. Enjoying the fullness of his blessing. Blessing is the infusion of something with holiness, spiritual redemption, divine will, or one's hope or approval. A blessing also used to refer to bestowing of such an approval or divine will. It always comes as a pronouncement or a declaration. So I stand here as a man of God to declare God's blessings upon your life. This day you are blessed. This day you are blessed. You are blessed when you go out. You are blessed when you come in. Whatever you touch is blessed. Wherever the sole of your foot will tread upon, may the Lord give unto you as your possession. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed are you, blessed are your children, blessed are the works of your hands. Blessings comes through pronouncement. It comes through declaration. So as I declare the blessings of God upon your life, I activate the power of God upon you. That wherever you go, you shall see victory. Wherever you find yourself, you shall win. You shall be a victor, not a victim. Victory shall be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 1 3 talks about it. it says, and he shall be, those who dwell in the secret place of the Lord, they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. May the Lord prosper you. I said may the Lord prosper you. You shall not wither. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. May the Lord refresh you. Refresh you daily. Refresh you in the morning. 
refresh you in the afternoon, refresh you in the evening, refresh you at night. In your sleep, may he refresh you. In your waking up, may he refresh you. Wherever you find yourself, may he refresh you. In the name of Jesus. For you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will never wither. Wherever you stand, you shall blossom. So whatever he does, shall prosper. I release the oil of prosperity upon your life. The Bible says it is God who gives us what? Power to make wealth. May the power to make wealth, may it be released upon you. Yes, I declare the power to make wealth upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. From this day forward, whatever you do, you shall prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 18, verse 29 through 40. Let me declare this upon you. For by thee I have run through a troop. You shall run through a troop. I said, you shall run through a troop. And by my God, I have leaped over a wall. As you dwell in the secret place of the Lord, you shall leap over every wall. Every obstacle that will come before you, you shall leap over it. Receive the grace to leap over every circumstances. To leap over every obstructions in the name of Jesus Christ. As for God, his way is perfect. Our God, his way is perfect. Hallelujah. Our God, his way is perfect. We might not understand what he's doing. You might not understand what he's doing in your life. But whatever he's doing in your life is perfect. Hallelujah. It's perfect in your life. He shall bring perfection to whatever he has begun. Hallelujah. Move to the next one. The next one. Uh, perf oh, sorry, perfect. Go. Yeah. No, no. Go to ask for the Lord. Yeah. The, uh, verse 30. Let me finish. Verse As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust him. You are tried. And once you are tried, he becomes a buckler to you. Hallelujah. Next one. For who is God save the Lord or who is a rock save our God it is God that gathered me with strength and make it my way perfect in every weakness of your life may the Lord infuse it with strength Receive the strength of the Lord. I said, receive the strength of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Who is your rock? God becomes your rock. He becomes your savior. He becomes your salvation. He said, he makes my feet like hinds feet. He makes your feet like a deer's feet. I mean, you leap. They have a certain spring in their, in, in, in their feet that they can sprint and leap over stuff. From this day, you shall leap over every obstacle. May the Lord make your feet like the hinds feet. Wherever you go, ah, you shall not be kept down, but you shall be up. You shall be above ever, only, beneath never. You shall be above all in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And search. 
and teaches my hands to war. The Lord shall teach your hands to war. So that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. And thy right hand has hold, holding me up. And thy gentleness has made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me. That my feet did not slip. You shall never slip. I said you shall never slip. Your enemies are waiting for you to fall. You shall never fall. Have you forgotten the scripture? That when Paul had a, a, a shipwreck in the island of Patmos. And the Bible says that he went to the shore. And he was gathering sticks. And after he had gathered the sticks and put fire in that sticks, a viper came out and bit his hand and clinged to his fist. And that viper, the moment that viper bites you, that viper ingests all his poisonous, venomous stuff into your system. And within some few minutes, you begin to swell and die. So the people surrounded by that island were looking at Paul because they know that that is the end of his life. They knew that there's something wrong with him. For a viper to cling to his face and beat this man so hard like that, this man will not survive. And the Bible says, after they have waited for a very long time. Expecting him to swell up and die. He did not. Your enemies after they have waited for too long. They will see the grace of God upon your life. Because whatever they are calculating against you shall never stand. It is the counsel and the power of God that will always stand in your life. Your enemies are waiting for you to die. You will not die. But you shall live to declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Your enemies are waiting for you to fall dead. But the more they see you, the more they see you rising up. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So thou hast enlarged my feet that I will not sleep. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. Hey, from this month going, this is the beginning of the third month. You shall pursue your enemies. You shall recover everything. You shall overtake everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, your enemies shall be consumed. In the name of Jesus, whatever is dead in your life shall resurrect this man. This man, you shall see the grace of the Lord. This man, you shall see the faithfulness of God. This man, you shall see the power of God. This man, you shall see an increase in your life. Increase shall be your portion. Hallelujah. All your enemies shall be consumed. For the Lord is your shield. Hallelujah. I've wounded them that they were not able to rise. They have fallen under my feet. And set me upon my high place. Your enemies are wounded. They are under your feet. The enemies of this church, they are under our feet. The enemies of progress in this church, they are consumed. They will never stand. The enemies in your household, household enemies, they are consumed. They will not rise against you. Because the Lord is your shade. For thou hast gathered me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. 
thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. This year, you shall destroy your enemies. The Lord has given you the neck of your enemies. Your enemies are choking right now. Hallelujah. They are choking right now. Somebody said, my enemies are choking. They will never stand. No. Verse 7 of uh, Psalm 9, where it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Oh, they will gather, but they can never come close to you. You shall see the reward of the wicked. You shall see the reward of your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord has kept his angels charge over you. He that dwells. I want you to know that you are in the secret place of the Lord. And once you are in the secret place of the Lord, no demon. No demon. No principality will be able to stand against thee. The three Hebrew boys, do you know what they were? They, they were in the secret place of the Lord. So when they told the king that we will not bow, it doesn't matter how many times the king heeded that fairness. Because the Bible says our God is a consuming what? Fire. The God himself is fire. Who brought fire into existence. So if you are dwelling in the fire of God, what kind of fire can consume you? You understand that? But the king did not know that these three Hebrew boys were in the secret place, in the oven of the fire of God. So when they threw them into the furnace, nothing happened to them because they were in the secret place of the Almighty God. What does this tell us? That whatever fire the enemy may plot against us, it will not scorch thee, it will not burn thee because we find ourselves in the secret place of our almighty God. Hallelujah. He that dwells in the secret place of the almighty God shall abide under the shadow. Hallelujah. And he will say that I am, he is my fortress, my shield, my God. In him, I will always trust. Hallelujah. May the Lord be your shield. May he be your buckler. May he be your savior. May he be your peace. May he be your restorer. May he be your salvation. May he be your strength. May he be your blessing. May he be your resource. May he be your everything. This morning, this day, this month, every month, as you wake up, you shall wake up with God. Wherever you go, you shall see him. He shall be your everything. And whatever he needs, he shall supply it. He shall be your provision in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Your prayer this morning is the Lord I am dwelling in your secret place I am under your shadow may your full covering be upon my life may your power of blessings be activated upon me in this third month Lord cause me to resurrect every passion every vision, 
every grace, every dream that you have placed in me, everything that is due me in this third month, may your name be glorified. Just open your mouth and speak in your own way. May your name be glorified in my life. This is the third month of a new decade. Let there be a resurrection. Let there be a resurrection. Let your power catapult me into my new height, new altitude, new blessing, new favor, new grace. May your name be glorified. May your name be magnified. May your name be exalted. Be thou exalted in our lives, O oh God, today. In the name of Jesus, speak through us, O oh God. Make room for us this month. The resurrection power that resurrected Jesus Christ of Nazareth from the dead. Let the same power overshadow us this month for greater works, for, for miracles. For signs and wonders. May favor go with us. May your anointing be with us. That whatever you have destined for us, let it come to pass. Make it right in Jesus Christ's name. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. I lift your people before you, O oh God. I pray that this month, let it be a month of blessings, a month of favor, a month of breakthroughs, a month of double doors, a month of opportunities, a month that is full of open heavens, that resources shall flow, favor shall connect them to people that need to be connected. Be our God, be our fortress. Be our shield. Be our buckler. Go before us and make room for us. You said that whatever we do shall prosper. This month, let us prosper in the land of the living. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And all the saints of God shall say, Amen. To those of you who are watching us by Spoken Word TV, I want you to understand that by God's grace, as you dwell in the secret place of the Almighty God, His shadow, you shall abide under His shadow. His full covering, His full counsel, His full grace shall be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. This day marks the first day of the third month. And I speak and I declare as a prophet and as an apostle in this place. And the sound of my voice, whatever is buried, blessings that have been buried, visions that have been dead, grace that have been denied from you, may them resurrect in your life. May them be activated right now on your behalf. That this month shall be the beginning of great things in your life. Shall be the beginning of your miracles, beginning of your breakthroughs, beginning of whatever God has destined for you. You are destined for breakthroughs. Failure is not an option in your life. You are a victor and not a victim. May the Lord cause you to rise up above every situation. May you leap over every wall. And may you run through every truth in your life. And may the name of God be glorified in your life. It's not over until it's over. Say as the Lord, shalom, peace unto you. Amen.